Okay, the essential question for today is how can we use inequalities to make comparisons in two triangles? Remember, what we were doing yesterday, we had one triangle, okay? So the idea was we had one triangle, and if we knew that this was 30 degrees and this was 40 degrees, then in terms of um, A and B, we should know which one of those two sides is going to be longer, A or B. Which side would, would be longer, side A or side B? A. Side A would be longer because the uh, longer side was always going to be across from the bigger angle. So side A was bigger. So, but notice everything we did yesterday, it was all within one triangle. Um, today we're basically doing the exact same thing, but there's a way for it to apply to two triangles. And we're going to look at that. But other than the two triangle thing, it's really the same thing. You're, uh, all day you're going to hear me say, once again, the bigger side is going to be across from the bigger angle, just like yesterday. But before we get into that, we've got to go ahead and knock out the warm-up. Um, a triangle has one side length 10 and one side length 15. Now, yesterday I showed you hinges and doors, and we were opening and closing. But by now, we're just going to go ahead and go to the, the shortcut sort of way of looking at it. Um, what am I going to do with these two numbers? How do I get the, uh, the smallest um, that it could possibly be? Subtract. Okay. If I take these two numbers and subtract, that's going to give me the lower uh, limit. So what is the lower limit? So 5. 15 minus 10 is 5. So it cannot get quite that low. So that's the lower boundary. So let's see. So I'm going to use x to represent um, the third side. It really doesn't matter what there. No, not really. Um, now, how do I get the upper limit? Add. You add. So we subtract. We find the lower limit. We add. We find the upper limit. So what's the upper limit going to be? 25. So as far as an inequality, that's what everyone should have had for the inequality. Now, how could I say this in like everyday words? Right, here's one way you can see. I hear people saying, um, it must be, whoa, <laughs> mutt. Let me try that again. It must be more than five, five, but less than 25. I could say it that way. It might even be a little shorter if I use the word between. How could I say this using the word between? Yeah. Isn't that even a little shorter? Couldn't I just say between 5 and 25? Either way is fine, but um, if you get comfortable with the word between, it's quicker. Any questions on the warm-up? Is that pretty straightforward? Raise your hand if you had it. Do you have, that was your answer, no problem. Okay, put your hands down. That was almost everybody. I think we're good, we're good on that concept. And that was like the harder concept, so the rest of it is really easy. Okay. Now, this is one of those, uh, see this, uh, the hinge theorem is what we use when uh, we're comparing angles and matching them with sides in two triangles. They call it the hinge theorem. Now, I'm going to read this to you, and halfway through, your mind may, you know, uh, fog up, and your eyes may gl glaze over. Um, but this is the, uh, the precise mathematical way of describing this. But you know, then we'll use our everyday language and it'll be really quite simple. But in precise language it's saying, um, two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, if and only if the third side of the first is longer than the third side of the second. All right, so there's no way around the, that cumbersome wording, which um, you would have to read it 10 times to really fully uh, understand what it's saying. Let me say the, let me relieve everyone's mind by saying the simple version first. 
Now, what I'm going to say now is not mathematically precise, but it's easy to understand. Just like yesterday, in certain situations, the, um, the bigger angle is going to always be across from the bigger side. Okay? Now, again, we're talking about two triangles today, as opposed to yesterday, we had one triangle. So, this is not going to work just for any old triangles, though. It has to be a special case. And the special case is, um, do you see these markings? What do these little marks mean on the sides? That means congruent. So, see how, I'm going to color these in red. See how these sides, uh, messed up a little bit. See how those two sides are congruent to these two sides. For this hinge theorem to work, that has to happen. You have to have a pair of congruent sides. But not only that, it only will help you if you've got the angle that's in the middle. If I had angle W, that wouldn't help me. If I had angle S, that wouldn't help me. It has to be the angle formed by the congruent sides. It has to be the angle. That's what they mean when they say the included angle, that part of it. It means it has to be the angle that's formed by the congruent sides. So anyway, if you have a pair of congruent sides, and if you have the angles that are in the middle of that, then the longer side will always be across from the bigger angle, just like yesterday. With that in mind, you should be able to tell me, um, which is bigger, WX or ST? Which side is going to be bigger, side WX or side ST? Can everybody see that WX is going to be bigger? Now I get to see who is listening. Why? Why is WX bigger? Um, Ward? Uh, because it's the opposite, or like, what Ward? Yeah, it's bigger degrees. It's across from the 88, and finish that sentence. And it's bigger. And it's bigger. Okay, um, 88 versus 35. 88 is bigger, so the side across from the 88 should be bigger. So WX should be greater than, and now we fill it in. What am I about to put in this spot right here? ST. ST. WX should be greater than ST. Sometimes they talk about the word converse. You guys remember what the word converse meant if we're talking about a conditional statement? What did we do when we said the converse? Right. The Q and the P. We switched the Q and the P. We, we reversed the whole thing. So the reason why they're mentioning that here is because the hinge theorem that we're talking about today says if the angles are bigger, then the sides will be bigger. Okay? What would the converse of that be? Correct. Solimar said if the sides are bigger, then the angles will be bigger. So technically, as we look at example two, we're talking about the converse because now we're given the sides and we're looking back to the angles. So, um, which, which of these angles are bigger? Angle C or angle B? Which has got to be the bigger angle? Angle C. And you can't just go by the picture. You have to use the number. So tell me why angle C is guaranteed to be bigger. What if they were both up to? How would I know? The length of the cross right. right. You have to look at the, the 12 versus the 9. The bigger, uh, the bigger side will be across from the bigger angle. So 12 is bigger than 9, so angle C should be better, bigger than angle F. Okay? You see the congruency of the sides? Uh, once again, let me draw your attention to the fact that it has to be the angle in the middle the angle between the congruency. If I had angle A, that would not help me. Okay. I realize how smart you guys are, so I'm actually going to pause for like five minutes because you really should be able to do the next several problems on your own. You, you get it already, okay? So I'm going to pause the tape. Go ahead and do like the next four problems or so. Okay. Um, let's do this. We have three options, uh, either less than 
or equal to or greater than. So I want you guys just, just to be able to show me what you put on your fingers. So let's hold up one finger. A less than will be one finger. Um, equal to will be two fingers. No, I changed my mind. Yeah. For less than, we'll do thumbs down. Okay? What do you think I'm going to do for greater than? Thumbs up. For equal, we'll just do the fist. Fist. Okay? All right, we'll do it that way. So if it's less than, thumbs down, because that's like less. Greater than will be thumbs up, and we'll hold up a fist for equal to. All right. Everybody show me what you put for number one. Show me what you have for number one. Okay. Put your hands down. Looking around the room, everybody had greater than. Okay. Looking at the angles, 54 is the bigger angle. Therefore, side ST should be the bigger side. Bigger than a VW. So ST is greater than VW. Um, show me your answers to problem number two. Show me your answers on your, your thumbs for number two. Waiting on Chase. Number two. Okay, okay. All right, everybody put your hands down. Almost everybody said less than. Okay. So I'm seeing that um, 98 is the smaller angle. So DE across from it should be the smaller side. DE should be smaller than EF because 98 degrees is a smaller angle. So that is correct. Show me your thumbs for number three. Or your fist, either way. Show me your answer to number three on your hands. Waiting on, okay. All right, put them down, put them down, put your hands down. Almost everybody said less than, okay? We do have two different size angles here. So the, um, the smaller angle should be across from the smaller side. So 55 is a smaller angle, so JK should be the smaller side. So JK should be less than LM. That is correct. Okay. Show me your answer to number four. Show me your answer to number four. Waiting on Jack. Number four. We're on number four, Jack. Waiting on Chase. What? Oh, there we go. Keep him up. Keep him up. All right. Put your hands down. All right. Everybody said greater than that I could see. Everybody's hand that I saw said greater than. Um, yeah, this is the converse. The bigger, the bigger side should be across from the bigger angle. So 61 is the bigger side. So angle 1 should be the bigger angle. So that's the answer number 4. Um, any questions? Seems like a couple people had questions on that last one. Do you guys understand now? I don't remember who had a question. You're good now? Okay. Any questions on the front page at all? No questions on the front page? Okay. All right, let's keep it going. Show, have you guys done the back page? Raise your hand if you've done uh, the next few problems. No. Raise your hand if you've done 5, 6, 7, and 8 already. I thought it was illegal. <laughs> All right, a lot of people haven't finished. I'm a good man. Okay, so we're on the back. Wait, yeah, I haven't done 5 yet, have I? Okay, quickly. You did, you did five, six, six, seven, All right, show me your answer to number 5 real quick. Put them up, put them up, answer, we're on number five, put them up. Okay, put them down. I saw everybody saying greater than. Um, and that makes sense because we have angle two. Angle two is across from the 29. We have angle one. Angle one is across from the 30. So 30 is bigger, so angle one should be bigger. So that is correct, greater than. Derek, stop tapping. Um, all right, number six, put them up. Number six, put them up. 
Okay, put them down. Everybody I saw was saying less than. We have um, angle one matches with the 29. And angle two matches with the 31. Um, as far as angle one, 29 is smaller, so angle one should be smaller. So that's why that is less than. Jet, that's one. Quiet mode, brother. Looking at number seven. Put them up. Number seven. Put them up. Put them down. Everybody I saw was saying greater than. Greater than. So let's check it out. Angle one is right here. Okay? I'm going to trace this one in just to make it extra clear. There's angle one sitting right there. Angle 1 is across from the 17. So those are matched. I'm going to change colors now. Okay, angle 2 is this angle that goes like this. Ah, close enough. There's angle 2. Angle 2 is across from the 16. So angle 2 matches up with the 16. Angle 1 matches up with the 17. Since 17 is bigger, then angle one should be bigger, thus the greater than. Okay, number eight, put them up. Number eight, put them up. Wait, not Haven. Okay, put them down, put them down. Most people got it, okay? This is what I saw on everybody's paper, I mean on everybody's hands. Equal sign, people are putting up the fist. Okay? Why? How do you, I don't even see any numbers. How did you guys know what to do? There are no numbers. Well, I've got the nine, so I know the sides are congruent. These angles that are like this, when you have an X that's formed, the angles that are opposite each other, are, they're called vertical angles. Even if they're sideways, they're still called vertical angles. And hopefully, back in middle school, you guys learned that vertical angles are equal. Okay, if there's an X, angles that are across from each other will always be equal. So these angles are equal, therefore the sides that they are matching, the, uh, the BA and the CD, since the angles are equal, the sides that go with them should also be equal. So AB should equal CD. Okay? All right, any questions on number five through eight? No questions? Okay. Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, um, nine and ten, these are the type that if you space out now, these will be the, the questions that should be posting on Edmodo. Mr. Bird, I don't quite understand number 11. Could you, da, 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 da. I'm doing it now. Now, if you still don't understand, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm happy to answer your questions on Emoto. But I'm telling you, this same type of problem is going to be right on there. Learn it now if you can. Okay, ready? And it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's all about an inequality. See that word? We are going to create an inequality, and then we're going to solve it for x. That's all that we're about to do. Now, congruent Sides. I need to identify my congruent sides. I'm going to color them. Um, you see the 45, right? Um, and the shared side in the middle. Can we all agree that the shared side will always be equal because it's the same for both? Okay? Now, what about this 45 right here? Is that going to be equal to anything? You see the other 45 over there. So on the other side of the picture, I have this 45 happening. Okay? And then, like I just said, I've got the shared side happening. Okay? So I've got the blue angle and the red angle. Can you visualize it? You're frowning. Lisa, what's wrong, sweetie? Do you under Am I losing you a little bit? Okay. Um, for this whole... The bigger sides across from the big, bigger angle thing to work, I have to have two pairs of congruent sides. Okay? So, first of all, you see the 45 and you see another 45 over there. 
So that means this red side, which I marked with a single mark, and this blue side, which I also marked with a single mark. Can you agree that those two sides are equal? All right, so that's one pair that I need. I need a second pair of congruent sides. Anytime that there's a shared common side, that's going to be the same for both triangles. So that's why I colored them both and I marked them both. So once you look at the two congruent sides that I just found, can you see how they form a V? Okay, that was important. I had to see the V because the bottom of the V, that's the angle that we need to compare. Okay, so that means the 52, which is in the bottom of the blue V, is going to be compared with the x plus 18, which is in the bottom of the red V. Is that making more sense at all? Okay. Now, Jet, question. Did you just say, like, if you should No, I said we're going to compare the 52 with the x plus 18. Those are the angles that we're going to compare. Now, which one is bigger? Red or blue? Blue. Blue. Let's see. Hold up one finger for red. Hold up two fingers for blue. The question is, which is bigger? Hold up one finger for red. Hold up two fingers for blue. Which is bigger? Okay, put your hands down. Everyone said that blue should be bigger. And that's correct, because the 39 is bigger then 36, so the blue side should be bigger. That's going to allow me to make the inequality between the x plus 18 and the 52. So that's what I'm about to do. Um, the deal is, the blue side is bigger. That means x plus 18, draw. Maybe if I do it over here. What happened? Let me start over. My technology is failing me. There we go. Um, the x plus 18 is the small one. So I'm going to put x plus 18 should be less than 52 because the red side is smaller than the blue side. That's the key, being able to write the inequality. Solving it is the easy part. What am I going to do to solve this thing? Yeah, just subtract 18 and we're done. Help me out. What is 52 minus 18? 34. 34. 34. Okay, so x is less than 34. So that's what you're supposed to do for problems like this. This is what they mean by a restriction. When they say restriction, x has to be less than 34. That's the restriction. Okay? Now look at number 10. Okay, we have time. I'm going to pause the tape. I want you to take a, a two minutes and do number 10 yourself. Okay, you have to be careful with this one. Because of the way the triangles are shaped, you might have been tempted to start comparing the 18 and the 3x minus 8 because it seems, oh, this one's on the bottom and this one's on the bottom. But that would have been wrong. We are not going to compare the 3x minus 8 and the 18. Because look at the angles. It's all about the angles that we're given. We've got this 21. Okay, now look at these. I've got my 18, and I've got my 12, and it forms the 21, right? Now, my 18, um, now oh, on the other triangle, here's my 18. Okay, what's the other one, a 12? Here's my 12. And then here's, and of course, here's my 126. So do you see how these are the two angles that we have to compare? The two that I just marked with maroon. Um, and they're not facing the same way. So we have to deal with that. So I'm not going to compare the 18 and the 3x minus 8. True, 3x minus 8 I'm going to work with because that is across from the 126. What side is across from the 21? X. X. Across from the 21 is X. So I have to compare that. So I'm going to compare 3x minus 8 with x. Which is bigger? Just say it out loud. Three x minus eight. Clearly, 3x minus 8 is bigger uh, because it's across from the bigger angle, 126, as opposed to 21. 
So that's why I'm going to write the inequality 3x minus 8 is greater than x. So that should have been the inequality that everyone began with. Does that make sense? Did I lose anybody just then? Okay. Solving it hopefully will be the easy part for you guys. Now, when I do these problems, you guys, um, anytime I see a variable on both sides of the equation, I want to handle that first before I do anything else. So I see 3x on the left, and then I see x on the right. Variable on both sides. So I need to move one of the variables. You could subtract x from both sides. Most people will probably want to subtract 3x from both sides because you guys get messed up when it's 0. People make mistakes when it's 0. I don't know why. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. That way these will cancel. Correct. So that's going to give me negative 8, just like Jet said, is greater than what? Negative 2x. Negative 2x. Now, this is probably where Jet's team had a question. Because we've got to be careful. Derek said, what am I going to do next, my friend? We clearly are going to divide. Why am I so worried right now? Well, why do I have to be so careful right now? Kids forget this. Um, clearly we need to divide both sides to get x by itself. But this is the one thing that's different than just solving an equation. The one thing we have to be careful of when we have greater than, less than. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you're going to have to reverse the inequality. Let me say that again. When you multiply or divide by a negative, you must reverse the direction of the inequality. Please don't forget that. So on my next step, I'm going to have 4. But instead of having greater than, I must reverse it now. And I'm going to have less than. 4 is less than x. So this would certainly be correct. And I would accept that. Now some people like to always have x on the left side. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's bothering their OCD to have the 4 on the left like this. So it's fine if you want to uh, switch it around, but you better be careful. If I want to write x on the left just because um, it makes me more comfortable, uh, you better switch the sign with it, okay? That alligator better still be eating the x when I'm done. Right now, the alligator's eating the x. When I re rewrite it, the alligator better still be eating the x. So I would accept either one of these as uh, correct. Okay? Here endeth the lesson.